Welcome to our Travis Scott song tier list, and today we're going to be going through different Travis Scott songs, ranging from his whole catalog, even including some singles. So this is going to be exciting, and if you guys want some more tier lists, make sure to hit that subscribe button. So let's get started with Franchise right off the top, and to me, this is like Travis Scott's McDonald's song, bro. Like, it's fast food, so. it's microwave, the structure of the song is a mess, the way you, you abruptly go from one artist to the next. You have MIA with, like, the sushi bars. No, um, I think I think MIA definitely knocked off points on the song. It's, but it's mid for me. I'm not gonna lie to you. It is mid for me. I had it. You agree? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. I agree with you, and I think that a lot of people would probably get mad at that because maybe it's their introduction to Travis Scott, especially for the younger generation. But even looking at the song, like you were saying, it's a bit of a hot mess. If I'm being honest, production's with you. nice. So I like the, like the futuristic beat. Like that's the one thing. I mean, even, even at that, like it doesn't necessarily move me as a production as well. Like going through this list, there's ten times better production. So franchise is gonna go mid. But what about Goosebumps? Okay, because this is another song that. Could could be considered McDonald's, but I don't consider it McDonald's, to be honest with you, because it's a really quirky song when you really put it together and you actually go into the music. So where are we rating this? I love it, bro. A psychedelic classic from the 2010s. Um, you've never heard Kendrick like this before or after this song in terms of like that extreme falsetto and the tongue twister with the Peter Piper bars. That was fire. And I don't care, bro. Like, I wish I was there when he played this song 14 fucking times in a row because it's that good. It still aged well for me. I would go great with Goosebumps. Okay, thank God. I, I listen. Yeah, I, you I, have I, the same range. I had between good and great. Okay, I had between good and We're great. We're seeing eye to eye good. for now, guys. For now. Next up, though, we have Oh My This Side, and this is an all-time classic. And I love that this song is sort of it's it's sort of a backward song in the sense that it starts off high tempo, don't then go slow, and they're taking you from their their like present perspective. All the way back to like what it was like growing up in the respective neighborhoods. Um, amazing fucking production, bro. The guitar chords are beautiful. The wavy synth section. Um, Quavo and Travis, like this probably set up the seeds for their collab album. Yeah. You saw how good the chemistry Actually, was. Actually, maybe. You could probably say that. I think that like their chemistry was on full display over here. It's their best collaboration to date, without a doubt. And I even think when you look at Rodeo, this is in the top tier of that track list, if I'm being quite honest with you. Like you were saying, the different production switch at the end, I really do enjoy it. So I'm going to go amazing with this one. I would go amazing too, bro. I love their melodies on this, bro. Um, next up, though, we have Yosemite. Um, you got a typical turbo beat in this. You have like the sun bleached acoustic guitar strings. And um, to me, the song is mid. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. Like, no, gonna, go it, gonna flows least. well. And like, I like how Travis is like harmonizing behind them. But Travis literally just takes Gunna's flow from sold out dates. And if you don't believe me, like, you can listen to sold out dates again in this song. Um, and Travis, like, is on this for 30 seconds. So you're left feeling like this is just a Gunna song with Nav. Um, having like a random placement at the end and obviously we know how low his vocals were mixed in the original mix thank god they switched it um but yeah, I just, I don't feel like this song is special at all, bro. I'm not a big fan of this song, especially in the context of Astroworld. But when I was looking at it for face value, when I was doing my notes for this episode, I'm like, oh, I'm like, is it really like a mid song? And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think so. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Um, I think everyone had good verses on the track. I do like the beat as well. Um, I think there is a nice bop to it as well, where like you could get immersed into it and you're just vibing out, man. It's nice. Like you have all of the masters of vibe, quote unquote, with Nav, Gunna and and Travis ah, and I also feel like overrated all the no it's not that overrated come on we're gonna go good with this one I'll budge for you bro but I don't want to if this was up to me I'd go <laughs> mid um, let's go good with Yosemite okay next up we have Mafia and this is one of my favorite Travis Scott singles ever um he's skating on this record from beginning to end the melodies are intoxicating they're smoky I love the reverb you effects you didn't like this song at first all that much I liked it a lot but I it grew on me over time to a point where I love it now and the boy Wanda and Jahan Sweet production is amazing it sets up this dark and moody atmosphere. You also get the J. Cole vocals yeah. towards the outro and that actually gets me excited for what he could do with that in the future and um, I also, I like the dark ambiance of the song to be quite honest with you. I think that Travis strives best within that and if this is any indication of what we're going to be getting on something like Utopia, then run it. I'm yeah, totally and it's not like an it. epic stadium song the way like a fucking stargazing maybe is, but it's like an amazing B-side record to me, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, 
I'd go great with it. I'd go great with it. I think great I had, is fair. I had a great rating on it. I'm not going to yeah. lie to you. But let's I, keep I going on with this. Fair. Let's go on to drugs. You should try it. And um, this is one of um, the biggest fan favorites uh, within Travis's catalog. There's been so many Reddit forums and people on Twitter claiming that this is his best. Um, so many people, I think including us, had put this into our top 10. And it's because you're getting this sort of like psychedelic rock song that has a bit of romance in it as well. And it's seeing Travis in a place where he's never been before. And when you even compare like drugs, you should try it. Let's say to the rest of DBR, this is a completely different vibe than the rest of the mixtape. And I also feel like this is maybe kind of like a building stone for what you would get on something like a rodeo, right? Absolutely, bro. It's like a whirlwind of like emotions and hypnosis. Like this is a song that you can easily get lost in. And it's because of Travis's vocals, the way that they're manipulated, the way they're, revor they're reversed and distorted. Also, the fact that he has like multiple pitches simultaneously coming into the mix. Love the sung parts on it as well. This is peak psychedelic Travis to me. Um, I went to it amazing. <sighs> I could low-key go perfect with this. I went amazing because I think there's going to be certain tracks that we might put up into like that perfect but This is rating. one of his like most original and like beautiful songs ever, bro. Like This is really top-of-the-line Travis to me. So would you go perfect? I'd go perfect with this song. Okay, I'll butch for you. You butch, butch for Yosemite, for me? Okay. I'll butch for you on this Drug, one. Okay. you should try it. Perfect song. And I mean, if you're a big Travis fan, you've probably cried about that one not being on streaming services yet. But let's keep the train rolling. We have sicko mode and there's the memes of like... You know, if this is your favorite Travis song, then you're probably a 10 year old kid who discovered him because he started dating Kylie Jenner. Yeah, there's endless memes it. and conversations around this, and I think it's just because of how big it is. But to be quite honest with you, out of like all of the number one singles and all of like the diamond songs from the hip hop genre that have came, let's say from that 2015 up to now, Mark, this is one of the best. The production is actually super complex if you really pay attention to it. You're getting two different beat switches, not only one, two different beat switches. Um, it's interesting the way that like Drake leads you into the song, and then boom, you completely get that verse snatched off, and then you get Travis getting into his bag, and then there's a back and forth towards the end of the song it's a really good record when yeah. you have to look at it there's at so many value. like moving parts but it all flows so well and i think that it was monumental lyrically and sonically like they were giving you moments on here like drake's bar with like the checks over stripes and travis with like baby mom on the cover of forbes got these other bitches shook like everything felt like a grandiose moment on this song like you were saying beat switches the organ intro everything was fucking phenomenal i'd go amazing with sicko mode i'm not gonna lie to you i bro. went great I went great with it. Where are the flaws? Even Sway Lee slid on this bitch, bro. Come on now. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure. Why? Because it's overplayed? Yeah, you could say the overplayed excuse maybe comes into my decision making with this. I just mean that like, I don't know. I, like well, even looking at the other songs that might go into my amazing category, I don't feel like it stacks up to that. Like I wouldn't put this top five on Astroworld. All right, let's go great on it then, even though I disagree. Next up though, we have Pick Up the Phone and I love the sunny synths. I love the easy feel that this song has. The song was so fired, they had to put it on two different albums Bro, too. and even the, the nostalgia of this song, it takes you back to like summer 2016 and you have um, all three of them giving you these charismatic and energetic melodies. Um, and they were just all cooking fire the day they recorded oh, this. Absolutely. I would go... <sighs> I went amazing with this one. Better than Sicko Mode, eh? I think it's better than Sicko Mode. <sighs> it is a better song than Sicko Mode. I, I would put it on the same level as Sicko Mode, um, which would be amazing. So, amazing's fair. Amazing's I, I, fair. I could even go great with it just because Sicko Mode's now there. And I'm like, fuck, is it better than Sicko Mode? Probably not to me. Um, I'm going amazing with it. I'll budge again, okay, bro? There, there's been some budging. Let's be a team Fine. here. Let's actually build Fine. this out. Let's do Piss on Your Grave next. And it's pretty crazy looking like how different this song is in comparison to everything else off a of rodeo. It kind of feels like a leftover of Yeezus because it was originally, you know, a Kanye song. Um, I love the industrial aspect to it. I love the Jimi Hendrix guitar sample woven into this. Um, I love the manic energy from everybody. Um, but is it really an outstanding song it's not it's not it's not i've always been kind of thrown off by the kanye performance to a certain extent and i know that might be a hot take Why? because he told you that like uh he'll piss on your face like it's a urinal type of thing no not even the lyrics i oh. think that like it's just it's the way that he's screaming and the aggression it almost makes me feel a bit uncomfortable which could be a good thing but just for like track pleasure itself i never would throw this on i'm being honest with you like it's, this it's, is one it, of, it was funny because like all the bars like the aggressive bars kanye has he always says you so it feels like directed towards the listener so it feels like kanye's pissed 
pissing on you to a yeah, certain extent. Yeah, pretty much. Um, uh, and that's why, like, it's just, it's a bit of a weird song, to be honest with you. And I think it's a good song. Ye kind of gets repetitive and annoying towards the end. That's something else I went good I with picked it. up on. I would go good with Piss on Your Grave. Next up, though, we have Watch. And this was sort of a leftover off of Astral World that wasn't included. I'm um, happy it didn't get included. I'm though. happy, too. I'm not a huge fan of Travis's flow in retrospect. They're kind of a bit basic and lame. Kanye's manic flow is all over the place. And that Kylie snippet of her, like, saying, I'm going to bust down our baby pretty cringe to be honest with you bro and it's just a song about like them flexing their watches and shit you know like it also feels like the flow is kind of forced throughout everyone on the track yeah. itself it feels like a bit of a weird beat to attack if that makes sense i'd go just, mid yeah I, I yeah you go mid with it? i go mid with watch i never uh, I, 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 I never go back to it the performances aren't all that good the beats basic um i go mid yeah mid with watch as you sip your water sip the water there we go all right I had it at good. I had it at good, but I'm gonna budge. I'm gonna be a good friend All today. Right. I, I, I appreciate you scratch my back, I scratch cooperation, yours. Anthony. <laughs> Next up, though, we have NC17. This was a second time that 21 Savage and Travis Scott got together for a Travis album. Um, I think it's not as good as something like Outside. I think it's a downgrade. Um, yeah, the, you think it's a downgrade? I really like it as a track as well. Like I love. Twenty one is so low energy on this song. Yeah, but it's bro. menacing though. It I net it on her. It, I net it on her cheek collar, baby face. Yeah, like, but come on, we're not going to start analyzing Twenty One Savage lyrics right now. It's more of the vibe of the song. It's one of the most haunting songs on Astro World. Um, if you want a trap banger, you have it there. Um, I like the Twenty One Savage. Can we go good on this. I, 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 really I, I, okay, I originally had it at great, but again, I'll go down to good. Okay, fair enough. Because Travis and the B do go hard on it. Um, but next up, we have Upper Echelon, which to me, I love this song because it was my introduction to Travis Scott playing GTA 5, um, you know, rolling through Radio Los Santos and throwing this song was always a fucking pleasure to me. And this is an all-time slapper for me, bro. I love how, like playful travis is with his delivery he's sort of like bringing in like what sounds like a british accent at times the way he's like pronouncing words like outlandish even the ti part is actually ti crazy. snap yeah, ti has a crazy part on this song two chains a- too bro and like think about how rare it is to get like a straight out banger nowadays with like og trap guys and like modern trap guys yeah it was definitely that a moment and the the hype and manic energy of this song is crazy like i feel like taking your fucking skull and busting it through a fucking wall when you listen to this track. I don't, but okay. It's like on that level. Yeah, it's. I think. I feel Have you like ever it, done that to a song? Like bash your head against the wall? I, I don't think I'd be here right now if I did that. But I mean, <laughs> regardless though, I do think that when it comes to like energy and just pure like hype for a track, this is in the upper echelon. Also, of best use Travis. of like the straight up ad lib to me. Yeah. That's true as well. I went great with it. I go great too. I think great hey, is a okay. perfect. Okay, listen, we're 12 tracks in and so far we've been good with each we other. We have, we have. Next up, we have Through the Late Night. And when it comes to like a remix, or not really a remix, but like sort of an interpolation of another song, this is as good as it gets. I love what they did to sort of take Day and Night from Kid Cudi and make it their own. Um, you have to love the extended Kid Cudi hums on this. Um, also, like the late night hook sort of playing into day and night was also really dope. And to me, Travis gives one of his most dynamic performances ever. Um, and it's just a cool party song, bro. Absolutely it is. And it's also, it's probably one of their best collaborations that they have within them itself. Their best, You think I it's their say. best? Yeah, I could think that. Unless you include Stop Trying to Be God, which we're going to talk about later on. Yeah, we're going to have to um, talk about that song. But okay. the late night. I went amazing. I had that on my notes. Fuck, is it better than Sicko Mode, bro? Not, now yes, that, that Sicko Mode placement fucked everything up for me. Late Night's a better song than Sicko Mode. Stop okay, it. fine. It is. Yeah. I don't want you to say Slightly, yourself. slightly, yeah. It Ama- amazing it is. Next up, though, we have 902 and 0. Fucking perfect, bro. Yeah, I think like, we go perfect with this. We've spoken we've about the song. We've done breakdowns for this song so many fucking times. Um, perfect. Let's move the fuck on from that. Fucking Mike Dean, bro. Salute to that guy. Um, earth-shattering guitar solo there. But next up, we have First Take. And this song is mid to me, bro. I mean, It I is do- mid. Really? Okay, I thought you might might, might say okay, that it was good. Okay, because we were speaking about the placements the other day, and I was like, you know, um, I haven't revisited First Take in all that long, but I remember liking it off of Birds, you know? Like, it's never a song I really go back to and play all that often, but when I used to go back to it, I was okay with it. But not going back to it, I mean, just his flows are a bit weird. They're kind of like stop and go to a certain extent, and that kind of takes you out of the track because you don't necessarily have a flow that you could catch on with with Travis Scott, and that's what I like about his music is that he keeps you immersed from start to finish with his hypnotic flows and the vocal effects, and it's a bit of cheesy writing as well. It's kind of like the love song to yeah. a certain extent. It's also birds. like the most robotic he's ever sounded, in my opinion, and the song is like three minutes too long, bro. And you're just getting standard <laughs> performance. It's like a five-minute song. Why? I know. Um, definitely mid. Next up, though, we have Escape Plan. And I remember when I first heard Escape Plan, I'm like, wow, I've never heard 
a more basic sounding Travis Scott song in my life. Like this guy did nothing to leave his comfort zone on this song, not even for a second from the production to the verses and the flows. Do you feel like it gets a bit overrated within the community? Absolutely, bro. It's like eating a fucking plate of pasta with like no added ingredients, not even any olive oil, bro. Like just straight out spaghetti out of the fucking... The pot. Wow, you're going savage today. Yeah, you're going. Oh, come you're going on, bro. On this, like, huh? is, is it's this not, not bad. Is this it's not, not the most bad. basic sounding Travis song? It's basic, but it's not that bad. It's he, mid to he, me. No, it's not mid. It's, it's actually mid. it's a good song. It's a good song. It's not anything too crazy, like you said. This came and like, went I, too, bro. I, I mean, no, I mean, I, I'll play it sometimes when I want to revisit that Tupac. But uh, that Tupac is a Tupac. Tupac, excuse <laughs> me. Um, but I mean, regardless. Why is it a mid song? There's nothing mid about it. The production is good. His performance is good. The hook is good. It's just it's good. It doesn't it's do anything else besides creativity that. Creativity and inspiration for me in every single. I mean, way. but I'm not Travis Scott. Like, I can never not really say like what's lacking and not from the creativity. I'm side just saying be, I could just be, see, being like, a Travis Scott fan ear. and what he's done and what he's played into musically and sonically in the past. He does. So nothing your expectations to, in his past catalog kind of like change your judgment no, on the song. Knowing what he's capable of changes my judgment. I don't know what because he's so of. dynamic, bro. Throughout his whole catalog. Um, I really want to go mid on this. I would go good with it. It's really not a mid song. It's not a mid song. Fine, we'll go good, bro. Yeah, it's not a mid we'll song. We'll go good. Next up, Butterfly Effect. And um, yeah, this is one of those songs that was absolutely intoxicating to me when listening to it. I mean, I fell in love with just how sticky that hook was, how infectious it was. Um, and it's one of those songs that's aged well. And I remember listening to it before Astral World and being like, you know, like seeing the cover with him, like in the Lambo with the doors up, and I'm like, "This came out in a three pack with Green and Purple and Amen." And as Amen, well. bro. Yeah, I, I remember when that pack came out. It was cool because I ended up converting those MP3, those MP like three. What like, a things, time uh, that was! Like even looking at like A Team and how that was just a surprise pack on SoundCloud, bro. Like. What a time where for is music, that? Yeah, bro. We, where miss, is we need that? that again. Yeah, we need that sort of stuff again. But regardless, though, it's also cool because there's no swearing in the song whatsoever. Really? So, oh, wow. Yeah, I'm not sure know. if you ever picked up. Like, there's no explicit sign on it. I Even like the, the oh me, oh my, those breaks in the song that change up the flow. I love that, too. He sounds hazy. The deliveries, the perfect amount of slurred. I, like, I would go great with great. it. Great. One of his most iconic hooks as well. For Easily his life, great. For this life, I cannot change. Yeah, bro. For this life, I cannot change. But anyways, let's keep going on with this. Let's go on to Don't Play. Um, I love this track. It's just Travis getting absolutely I think aggressive. It's good. You think it's good? I think it's good, wow. yeah. I don't think it's anything special. I had special. to great and amazing. What the fuck? I think it's overhyped. I mean, the hook kind of gets no. a bit played out. Big Sean has a solid verse. I like what Matt Healy did to open up the song. That was sort of the best part for me. Um, apart from wow. that, What's, yeah. Sometimes I question your taste, but I like questioning your taste. So, like... Why would you? Well, I mean, you said good. You didn't say mid, so I could kind of understand where you're coming from. But yeah, I had great. I'd be team great and amazing. I always love playing it off. Why of would you have gone great or amazing? I would have edged towards great, but I thought yeah, you were absolutely gonna fuck with it. So I'm like, okay, I could budge to amazing. I could see how we that's can, there. we can do great then. If you were stuck in the middle, I have no problem going great with it. It, it is a solid. Like for early Travis, it is one of the best records he put out. I, I have to go great with it. And him. it was experimental, you know, for him. Okay, let's go on great with Don't Play, but let's go on to 3500 with Future. Um, man, you couldn't go anywhere in 2015 without hearing this song in a club. It was really that deep. And, I mean, we've spoken so many times about this song. You guys know how we feel about it. Now the question is, where do we place it? So where do you want to go with it? I mean, a fucking banger, bro. Like, Travis and Metro? Insane. Um, even Future on this was a bit more subdued. Interesting performance. I love the creative structure of it. Um, where are you going with it? I had it amazing. I had it amazing. In terms of like those Travis Scott rage songs, it is up there, high up there. One of his biggest bangers ever. Yeah, I'd go amazing. You can, yeah, you can't find a. You, it's very hard to find. What a, a badass bangers. title for a song too. Like naming it after a coat that Kim Kardashian got for her two-year-old daughter. Like, you see, I've, I've never really been infatuated with that sort of thing. But I, I don't give saying, a fuck th about that's that. That's just a know? cool aspect of the song. Like, it shows, it's an example and proof of the luxury he's sort of pouring into. To the song. Um, yeah, I would go amazing with it. Next up, though, we have The Ends. Um, and this is a brilliant song just about endings. You know, when you think about, like, how this is Travis's verse about, like, the ending of a night. And sort of, like, him needing his woman to comfort him after this night of partying. And then Andre 3000 is rapping about what could have been the end of his life if he was targeted in, like, the Atlanta murders that were going down in the early 80s. Um, pretty crazy to think about like sort of how different the verses are from Travis and That's 3K. Very true. Did you ever view that as a mismatch? Like no. subject no, matter wise? Absolutely not. No. 
No, I don't think so. Just like it's Andre three K, bro. I'll take it. I, you gotta I, let I, him do his thing. Yeah, bro. you just gotta let him do his thing. You know, yeah. I, you can never question what that man does on a on a song. So I went amazing with it. I, I had to go amazing. One with of his it. best ever intros. Yeah, I agree. Amazing. Okay, very interesting. Let's go on to Heist in the Room, but the remix. What this a time. snooze fest. This was a this was a snooze fest. This is a bad song to me. I'm not gonna lie to you. You put um, this bad. Already, I didn't like the song, and then we got Rosalia, who pretty much takes Travis's flow and raps in Spanish and. The worst part, the cringiest part, is her doing the ad libs, bro. Yeah, and the I heard straight are... up, and it's a lit from Rosalia. I'm like, no. I, I listen. I think Mortal Mami is a fantastic project. We've spoken it about is. how we love Rosalia on the podcast. She's a fantastic artist, but this remix was far from needed. Bloody awful. For, well, you sound like Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, I'm telling <laughs> you, sound, you now, bro. Where's the like, savage? Horrible today? performance. <laughs> um, I and had then, it bad. And, then you, and then like it's so bad, and you reach a little baby, and you're like, oh fuck, could this get any worse? And it does. It well, does. well, baby standard. Don't put it on baby this time. Come on, but it's he, standard. He cannot yeah, save on. that sinking ship, bro. You know no, what I mean? No, he's not the guy that you want at no. the homes of saving a ship. No, it's bad. And, and yeah, it's, it's a bad song. It's bad. I have between mid okay. and bad, but I'll, I'll budge for Next you on this up, one. Stop trying to be God. This is a perfect Travis Scott song to me, Okay, bro. we're going to go perfect again. Perfect. One of the most calming and peaceful songs from Travis. And it's so rare to get him in that meditative bag. So once you do, and getting that, like, that perspective of how he views ego and the importance of unity and selflessness, like, so refreshing. It is Stevie Wonder, bro. Just Stevie Wonder's harmonica deserves the perfect rating alone. That's very true. It is a perfect song going straight into the perfect category. But let's go into Mamacita. So there's a lot of Travis Scott fans that do view this as their favorite song that he's ever released. It's for good reason. Um, you completely get immersed into the track as soon as you hear that guitar sample. Um, there's no way that you've never heard this song if you are a Travis Scott fan. A little bit overrated. A little touch. I went amazing. Wow. I went good. I went good you? with Mama Cita. I love the twangy sort of iconic guitar riff. How could you love something about a song and go good? Um, I just, I don't think Rich Homie Kwan keeps me captivated what? all throughout. Um, I, I don't know, bro. Smoky California Reefer and like Denver, Colorado. It's fire, it's but fire. I, it's, it's good. F- okay, you said amazing. Well, we'll go great then. We'll meet in the middle, bro. Are you for real? You'd yeah, actually go real. great. Wow. I didn't think you were going to go I, that low I, with I, it. I, I never like loved Mama Cita. I thought I always thought it was a, good, a pretty a cool pooper. song. You're a little bit of a party pooper, bro. So, uh, just admit you're a party pooper. Not a party pooper. I, I was. <laughs> I, I, who doesn't I was, like Mama Cita? I, I, like I said I like the song. I think it's a good song. Uh, I never uh, said it was bad. Sheesh, I said okay. it was good. Okay, right, let's, let's move on, on to Anecdote. And again, when you think of that rage style of Travis's music, this is the fucking epitome of that, bro. I saw a performance that he did like in the Netherlands. And it, it looked like there was 100,000 people singing every word, and they were fucking jumping from start to finish, crazy, bro. Eh? you got to see yeah, the video, I, bro. I'm going to pull it up, actually. Um, I'm going to see if I can find it. And it's Go pretty crazy it. to me how savagely, like, he raps about, like, kicking an, an innocent cameraman off stage. Like, just the fact that he had to flex about that was so funny to me. <laughs> Poor cameraman, bro. Absolutely. There's um, actually a video behind that, too. I, I know. I saw seen. that. But, um, yeah, like I said, classic Rage Travis. I would go either great or amazing. I went great. I think great's fair. Well, think great's why fair. not amazing? Any reason that knocks off points I'm or anything? I'm just kind of looking at the rest of the tier list and the way that it's kind of okay. forming out. And I'm like, yeah, I feel like he does have better songs, though. Hell of a night, though. So we wanted to include this for the OG Travis fans because um, this is one of the first songs that ever kind of popped off Travis Scott. And, and I think and it's mid. You think it's mid? Wow. I think it's good. I don't think it's a mid song. It's really not that bad. Like, what do you think's mid about it? I just think Travis, like, sounds a bit sleepy on it and... He's not really putting that much expression into the performance. It that is a bit more of one of his take. popular songs, but I mean, it regardless, is. though, it's still solid. Apparently, it's, it's not Kylie a- Jenner's favorite Travis song. Pretty crazy. That is pretty crazy. Um, You'd go mid with it? Come I'd go on. mid with the song. That's a, that's a crime. You can't do mid with... Uh, There's better with songs than Alfaro, in my opinion. Um, fine. You want to budge? Do I budge? What do you want to do, bro? You got to budge for me on this one. Fine. You got a bunch for me on this. Good one. on hell of a night. Next up, though, we got Can't Say. And this is another song we've given our opinions on countless times. Melodic banger. Amazing chemistry between Don T and Travis. Um, I would go great with Can't Say. W. About you? I had great on here as well. If you Fire. want to talk about a song that's maybe a slightly tad like overrated in his catalog, especially by the fans, I do feel like this is one of them. But... I still give it its W. I think it's a great song. Let's keep going on with this. Maria, I'm Drunk, another song that we've spoken about on the podcast. So where does this go? Like, I I had Perfect on here. I had Perfect, but I could see why maybe you want to go amazing. Like, do you share the same opinion as me on this one? Fuck, is it a perfect Travis Scott song? I mean, 
you got a rare fucking J B verse where he snapped and actually wrapped his ass off. One of Young Thug's best performances ever, in my opinion. Um, is it up there with the nine hundred two one O's? Is it up there with the Stop Trying to Be Gods? Ugh, it made my top ten, but fuck, is it perfect? I would probably, I would go perfect with it. You'd go perfect with it? Very interesting. There's a nice mystique to the song that's so that's different than you Yeah, I'd go perfect with it. But let's okay. go with the zombies off of DBR. And you see, this is a song in Travis Scott's catalog that has kind of aged poorly to me to a certain extent. I just, I think it's a hot mess of a song, to be quite honest with you. Like, I wouldn't say a hot mess. Okay, I just think that there's a lot of disorganization in the track itself. Like, you listen to the way that Travis's vocals were blending in with, like, let's say, the production, and you're just like, I can't tell which is which at certain times, and even the content matter doesn't really move you all that much. The hook on the song is kind of bland itself. I went mid with it. Yeah, I don't like the animal growls either. I felt like those were sort of weird and poorly placed and implemented. Would you say you went with mid? I went with mid. I think mid is fair. I would probably go bad with it, to be honest with you. I really don't like it, but I'll budge. We'll go mid with I'll it. I'll budge again for the fucking 10th time this episode. Anyways, Way Back is next. Um, this has to be like, and everybody's top 20 Travis songs to me, bro. I mean, like, mm -hmm. not only do you have Travis like rapping his ass off with intensity and hunger, but you have that duality of like the hardcore rapping and the auto crooning. And it reminds me of like this older Travis Scott, um, but just refined. And you have Swizz Beats sort of being the hype man and the switch up too when you the get switch like up towards the, the look boy of, part yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. The, the switch up on way back might be one of my favorite switches in Travis's discography I think it's a super underrated song in his catalog just because when you think about the switch ups like people talk about the 90210s or the oh my diss sides and um, whatever else comes with that conversation but way back is up there for me in some of his best ever tracks and I would go amazing with it. I have it at an amazing rating. I would go with amazing too. Um, speaking of amazing ratings, should Stargazing go there? Because when I think about this song, it's like the tone setter of Astral. When you listen to like those kids screaming off the roller coaster, that engulfs you into the universe of Astral. World, you know what's bro. cool about this song? Going back to 2018 when the snippet dropped for it, like right before yeah. the album was going to drop, um, I thought that the first part was going to be a complete song on its own. And remember when we were doing the listening party back at Cumps when we were uh, using, I think we were using my mom's caravan and the speakers to be able to blast it up and we're sitting in the lawn chairs. I, and I don't think, it wasn't your caravan. What was I, it? I don't remember whose car it was. It was a sedan, bro. And we thought that the I, second I part was a mixed car, actually. I, I remember it because, like, you have that, like, long extended sort of transition into the second part of Stargazing and you're like, is this the same song in itself? So I went great or amazing with it. That's where I'm at with it. But I could go amazing. Um, yeah, I think I think amazing's fair on here, bro. It does set the tone for one of his best doms in his catalog. So let's keep going on with this. Let's go on to A Team and I'm not sure if you guys have ever had Apple CarPlay, but A Team will always be like the first song that ever comes on in the car just because it has the A slash dash. And at a certain point, um, I remember someone had Apple CarPlay at a certain point, and like the first song that would ever play just automatically was A Team, and you kind of get annoyed of it. But at face value, this song's hard as fuck. It's really good. I'll be honest with you, it's one of my like most replayable Travis Scott singles. Like it's always in rotation. I love it. But if I'm really gonna like judge it, bro, to me it's just a good song. I think that like. Even though I love the bouncy bass line and even like those mellow horns that are super unique, I feel like Travis is a bit one dimensional on it, doesn't switch up the flow all that much. Even the production is a bit one note to me. And just looking at everything else that we have in the great, I don't think it merits a place there. I would go good with it. I would go good as well. But let's go into Flying High. And when we talk about Flying High, a lot of people see this as kind of like the weaker part of Rodeo. And I do have to agree with that. I mean, going back to the whole like flying high, like sort of like hook that's in there. We it's flying high, yeah, shorty. It, we, yeah. It's not that great. It's, it's a not bit the, annoying, It's not bro. that great, but it's not a skip on the album for me. And like, I used to hate this fucking song originally, but it grew on me so much time. Um, you know, as I grew up, matured, I just saw the light, bro. And like the Toro y Moi bridge is fucking beautiful on this song as well. I would go good with it. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't I'd think it's mid. mid. I think it's a mid. No, song. I think it's a good song, bro. I think it's, it's not, so it's refreshing. Not, like it's not on the level. And of an the, the production, bro, is so fucking unique too to that track list. Like You're dropping the f bombs everywhere this episode. Eh? Get, get, get Got a problem good. with it, bro? No, I'm fucking okay. curse no, no, police. No, 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 you want no, no, me to put a dollar in the jar, bro? I'm just saying. Here. I mean, it seems like you put a dollar in the <laughs> yeah, jar for you, bro. <laughs> he put a dollar in the. Okay, like bro. That. But regardless, though, going back onto the track, it's a good song. Listen, I don't think it's as good as Piss on Your Grave. I don't think it's as good as Yosemite. I don't think it's as good as Escape Plan. Production's fire. The bridge is cool. Oh, man, come on, Travis it's not is as good pretty as good on it. It's not serious? a mid song. Though. We're not gonna say it's fucking like mediocre, bro. Like that. It's pretty good. You owe me another dollar. Um, all right. 
You'll budge for once, the first time. I'll, I'll budge. I okay. think it's a mid song, but whatever. We're we'll going to put it in good. Next up, though, we have skeletons. and What a moment in the Ox battles with this one, eh? That was a big. This gave decide. me a W, eh? When we were playing, uh, when we were playing our Ox battles on Discord, not on Discord, Twitch. sorry, on Twitch, um, which you guys could come view on our Twitch channel. You guys could go check it out. Uh, you ended up playing this, and I'm like, I had it right in my queue. I was just about to play it, and I was gonna take the W that round, but you ultimately played it first, and it's an automatic W whenever you play this song. It's one of the most underrated off of Astral, to be quite honest. You've like for like that perfect status, and one I of went the best. perfect with it. Yeah, it's the equivalent to feeling like you're literally floating in the air, bro, in slow motion, which is exactly how Travis describes the song. Like it's spot on. Um, the Tame Impala production is hypnotizing. It's psychedelic. It's beautiful. The weekend's vocals, the way that like they're perfectly and seamlessly transitioned into the song perfect song bro without perfect a song. fucking doubt w's in my books but let's go into backyard off of dbr i know you love this song it's one of your all-time favorites eh? oh, one of my all-time favorites yeah. but i i judged it in the context of like my bias aside and actually like trying to be critical with it and trying to be a bit of a nerd you know and i ended up going with either between great or amazing i, I, think, I think i think great is fair with it i love i, the, I think uh, great is i love the triumphant it. aspect to it and it's like a perfect house party song bro it really is. Not only that, but the storytelling of how like Travis made it uh, because of Al Farrell and like transitioning from summer to summer, I find super cool as a writing concept. Probably my favorite rapping performance from Travis Scott in his catalog, to be quite honest with you. So that's why I wanted to consider it amazing. But I could go great with it. I'll budge again. Next up, though, we have SDP Interlude. And this is sort of like skeletons. Um, it's sort of like the skeletons of Birds in the Trap in the sense that it totally washes over you. And like it makes me feel like, oh, okay. This is what a DMT high must be like, even though I've never experienced it. But just in the fact that like it distorts your reality, it you does know what I mean? Reality. It's a crime that he did not include the full version, though. It, I mean, I think that's the biggest wish out of every Travis Scott's fans like Christmas list is just to get STP, the full extended version um, on streaming services. I think that if you would have had that song extended on Birds in the Trap, it would have added so many points to the album. It would have, bro. bro. I just I love the panning. I love the reverb. It's just okay. Do you think the do you think the extended version is on the same level as let's say a 90210 as a maria i'm drunk as a skeletons do you think it's up there up there with his best but maybe not like the top three travis songs ever i would go perfect with it though if it was extended i ended up yeah. going with good though good what I went with good that's I went a fucking with... crime bro i, I had this in my top 10 travis song. this is amazing to me and i get it the whole song all he's really saying is smoke some drink some pop one but that's all i needed it's bro it's good this is one of the best product no amazing bro it has to be great then we got to meet in the middle with great the very least <laughs> it's an interlude bro it's just I don't it's give a fuck. if we were talking about the extended version then we'll have a conversation the australian but... vocalist they sample was genius no bro this is amazing um Let's go great. Uh, let's, okay, okay may, let's maybe, go great. maybe I'm deaf, but whatever. Let's go great with this one. Apple um, we'll Pie is next up, and you said on our free smoke, this is one of the weakest songs off a of rodeo, and I cannot disagree more with you, bro. Why, why, why would you rank it and why? I'd between good and great. I went with that. I think it's one of the weakest points and one of the best trap albums ever. I mean, people take things a bit out of context, and I feel like, yes. That was an it's, outtake. It's, it's, it's one a, of the better songs off a of rodeo to me. I don't agree. It's um, one of the most personal songs from Travis Scott, him rapping about having to make his own way in life and, and not take out of Ma Mama's apple pie anymore. Also, just like the burst of sounds, the cowbell that adds a freshness to the that's track. It. I, just, I feel like it's a bit disorganized as a track. No. And you're getting like a bit of different flows from Travis where like it kind of disengages you as you get midway throughout the track. That's just from my own personal listening. No. Um, uh, all right. My bad, bro. I go but great. I, I, I'd go good with it. It has to go good. It's not a. It's not a great song. I'm sorry. Totally, this it is a great song. But uh, for the sake of this tier list, we'll go good. Next up, though, we have Coffee Bean and another outro. And in classic, you know, Travis fashion, he's really getting shit off of his chest here, rapping about sort of the obstacles that he faces with his relationship with Kylie. And this sort of feels like you driving home from the amusement park. You know what I mean? The party's over and now you're sort of easing into this reflective state. And you're relaxing. Yeah. I love the production behind this and I love the rock influence to the it The funky as well. old school guitar yeah, too. Yeah, it's really, really nice. I went amazing with it. I'd go amazing with Coffee Bean. Uh, would I go amazing with Coffee Bean? Yeah, between amazing and great, I guess. It's one of the best off of Astroworld for sure. Yeah. All right, let's keep going on with this. Amazing, let's go on to fine. Sweet Sweet off of Birds in the Trap, Sigma McKnight. And to be honest with you, I was a massive fan of this song, but it's kind of grew it off me. Really? I love the hook. I love the multiple pitches you're getting within that same hook from Travis. It's also one of his favorite songs. Actually, no, he said it's his favorite song off of Birds. 
which That's is very interesting. interesting. I, I, like um, I even like the, the new style. He brings some Creole into that, which was different for him to tap into. Mike Dean went to work with the Synths. Um, I would go... What did you see? you went? Good? I went good. That's fair. I, 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 I could have gone great, but yeah, it's not crazy. It's not one of the craziest songs. No. Off Next up, though, we have movie. Uptown, which is... Um, well, it was one of Travis's biggest bangers at the time that it came out. I'll say that. But has it aged all that well? I mean... To me, it sort of just sounds like an inferior version of like Kanye's Monster. To me, to a certain extent, you know, it's super uh, like influenced by that tr by that track. I like ASAP Ferg on it. Pretty though. cool. Ferg has a good track. I'm good, good with it. I, I didn't think it's anything too crazy, but I was like, you know what? It is one of my favorites off of Al Faro. Impressive that Wonder Girl made that beat at 16 years old, though. Very cool. shout out Wonder Girl, absolute legend from uh, from Toronto. Next up, though, we have Gray as the last song to wrap up this tier list, and. This is probably one of the most underrated Travis Scott songs in his whole catalog to me. It's underrated, but don't try to like slip it into the great or amazing. It's not going there. I don't think it could go there. Yeah, the, the beat is a bit boring. It's like it, it kind of feels like you're watching, you know, like the Disney Channel to a certain extent. Like it's just it's very like Fruit Loop like if that makes sense to you. It's just it's basic. I, I just kind of like the fact that he's singing his heart out without auto tune again. Another refreshing moment in his catalog. But is it like super well executed? It's, upon? it's, it's no. more the production that gets me knocking off points. Yeah, it's just it's a boring song to listen to. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I never visit DBR and be like, oh, I'm gonna go listen to Gray. You know, I've I, always... I'll, I'll bump. I'll bump Gray. I would go good with this song. I had between mid or good because I was like, you know what? It's not a. It can't. It's kind of like an escape plan situation with me where it's like nothing's really mid or bad about the song, but it's just so like nauseously like good that you have to put it there but yeah i would go good with it but guys let us know in the comment sections where do we fuck up where do we get it right and how would you grade these songs and as i mentioned in this stream if you guys are uh, not in the stream sorry in this video because i'm thinking about the stream yeah. if you guys want to come into our aux battles um they're going down uh every single monday night on twitch uh, and we also launched our new audio podcast if you guys want to go check that out thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one peace